give God honor, praise, and glory. Yes. For He has done great things, great things yes. Yes. in our lives. Amen. Amen. Somebody say, I'm even expecting greater things. Amen. Amen. Because He is that kind of God. Eyes have not seen, yeah, neither as they enter into the heart of man, but God has in store for us. Amen. Somebody said he has not done what he's going to do. Amen. Then somebody said he's doing a great work. And I believe that God is able to finish whatever he's done. Amen. So he is going to do greater than we can ever think or imagine. Isn't he good this morning? Yeah. Isn't he wonderful this morning? Yes, he is. God is the almighty God. Greater than any other. And he will be in a class All by, by himself. Amen. Amen. He is the only true and living God. Amen. He told Israel, I brought you out. And I am your God. Yes. I am the one who is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, and above all that you can ask, think, or imagine. This morning, we thank God. If you will, turn your Bibles to the book of Psalms, number 133. Amen. Amen. It's good to see all of your faces this morning in this house. Amen. Beloved, I want to tell you something. Every morning that we wake up, it's another day that we can get closer to God. Every day is sweeter. And I'm not talking about in the by and by. He wants us to have this sweetness right now. In fact, it was so sweet, he said this morning, the land is flowing with sweetness. Amen. The land is flowing with, amen, honey this morning. Flowing. Flowing. In other words, it's moving, y'all. The, the sweetness, the honey, is moving right among us every day. Ain't that something with somebody enjoying the honey and you not? Is that something? If you're a child of his and the honey belongs to him, you ought to be able to enjoy the honey as well. Amen. He says, the land is flowing. Rich. Flowing. The pomegranates. The grapes. Amen. Amen. Let us stand to our feet. Psalms number 133 says this. Yes, Lord. What you said? Look at here. Behold how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. It is like the precious ornament upon the head that ran down upon the beard, even Aaron's beard, that went down to the skirts of his garment. As the dew of Hermon, somebody said Mount Hermon. Mount as the dew of Hermon, and as the dew that descended upon the mountain of Zion, for there the Lord commanded the blessing, even life forevermore. Dear Lord God, this morning I pray that you embed us with your word, that we can rejoice on this morning. 
because of what you have already spoken, and we wait to come to pass inside of our lives. God, let it be rich, let it be of you, and let it be your will. Yes. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 I just want to talk about it's pleasant to be able to live together. It's pleasant to be able to dwell or live together. One of the hardest and difficult things in our day and time is once we get up some age, once we get up some education, once we get up some degree, once we get up some identity of ourselves, it becomes difficult to live together. Isn't that strange that the psalmist would declare unto us in 133 how good and how pleasant it is for us to be able to live in a unified state. Uh, let, me, let me just say something because when we live together, we become a part of one another. You, you begin to act like me and I begin to act like you and it just tells somebody that we are one of the other. Let me say as well, uh, Jesus had a disciple that tried to not identify himself as who he was when some of those asked aren't you one that was with him and Peter says not so not me you don't know me nobody here know me and I believe when the man Maybe that Peter cut off here, he would declare, I know exactly. I got the mark to tell. It says Peter cut off his right ear. Amen. So I believe this morning Peter was identified with Christ because he had been with him. He had slept with him. He had ate with him. He had lived with him for three long years. Well. And, and after the three years, looked like Peter would have said, it was good to have been uh -huh. in his company. Yeah, 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 yeah. But what did Peter say? Peter says, I don't even know the man. Know the man. And let me tell you something. When you live in the same household and you have the same parents, your accent somehow comes out the same. And I believe before this message is over, we're going to see some other things that are the same. How many of y'all know when a mother has daughters they kind of dress them alike. Yeah, yeah. They kind of dress them like what she imagined them to be. Uh -huh. When she has some sons, she dress her sons alike. Ain't that something? I, I, I believe that whether we dress alike, uh, whether we walk alike, whether we talk alike, it's because we are all in the same family. Oh, yeah. uh, all right. Isn't that something how, 
that they have enough of being connected to the body. But it's good and pleasant when the house, when the body, and everybody is coming together with one unified spirit. Oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. You, unity. And beloved, when we have unity in the house, when we have unity in the family, when we have unity in the church, and I always say I'm going to get in trouble. But when we have unity, we don't have little tricks or little division. Right but what we have is everybody working together for the common cause and the same reason and the same goal. We are all here to glorify God. Amen. 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 But for some unseen or for unforeseen reasons, some things do occur, right? Sure, sure. Try not to keep you. Uh, let's go to Genesis 13 and 8. Before. 
for thee. Separate thyself, I pray thee, from me. If thou wilt take the left hand, then I will go to the right. Or if thou depart to the right hand, then I will go to the left. And Lot lifted up his eyes and behold the plain of Jordan. Watch this, y'all. Jordan. We, we find Jordan all the way in the old, the new, all the way down, right? Yeah. That it was well watered everywhere before the Lord destroyed what? So, where did he go? Mm -hmm. He went to Sodom and Gomorrah. He went to Sodom. Uh, around the coast of Sodom and Gomorrah. Even as the garden of the Lord, like the land of Egypt, and thou cometh unto Zor. You know what? He went to the top of the mountain and he said, Lot, let there not be strife among us. But choose where you and your herd, you and your servants, you and he said, choose which way you want to go. You know what Lot could have chose? Lot could have said, we're going to choose to stay right here together. Uh -huh. We're going to choose to live right here. He said, how good it has been and how pleasant it has been to grow like we have, right? right. But no, we have got five heads over the one we started with. Now we have grow and say we need to spread out. Lot looked over there and he said, man, the grass look green on that side. Guess what Lot went at? Y'all know that's how Lot got ended up in Sodom? Yes. That's how he ended up in Sodom or Gomorrah? That's how Lot ended up in the place where he was because there was strife in the camp. Not from Abraham and Lot, but there was strife among uh, the herdsmen. Ain't that something? Well, if you was over the herdmen, what should have happened? We should have put the herdmen in check, right? Mm -hmm. Now we got to separate. How many of y'all know, sometimes folk don't realize it, but when you leave the house, you leave the blessings as well as the house. When you leave the house, you leave the prosperity as well as the house. When you leave the house, you leave all the goods that the house. Look, you can take everything with you, but because the house is in that place, because it's a designated place of God, it is the place of his blessing. And I want to say that this is the lesson for us to learn this morning before we will say, I believe I'm going to go and get me a house somewhere else. Let's go to Genesis 45 and 24.